four-wheel drive versus all-wheel drive, easy select versus super select two. What does it all mean? That's next, when the semantic promiscuity Special Olympics and my jihad on bullshit continues. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. If my inbox is anything to go by, there's great uncertainty out there about all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. In reality, it's not that simple, or at least not that clear-cut. It's not like science, where force means only one thing, and energy is another, and power another. There's a specificity fail in play here, so let us ride a wave into this grey ocean of ontological ambiguity on a surfboard crafted by a correspondent named Darcy. Mum and Dad obviously big Jane Austen fans. I was talking to the dealer about buying a new Poverty Pack Triton and the dealer contradicted what you said in your review and the online specifications on the website also confirm this. Oh dear, this does not sound so good for me or <laughs> what's left of my credibility. Darcy continued. The Easy Select off-road system has no diff lock to lock the front and rear axle. The salesperson tried selling this as a good thing that you can use 4H on high traction surfaces. However, this does mean that this car has no ability to actually lock into four-wheel drive. Doesn't this by definition make it an all-wheel drive? I think we can safely invoke the Twilight Zone theme music now. Would you mind? Back to Darcy. In my opinion, this is a huge deal. Buying a four-wheel drive ute thinking it is one, only to find out, bogged in the soft sand with only one wheel spinning, that it is actually an all-wheel drive. Might be a good idea to amend this on one of your Nutfest Friday videos. Feel free to mention me as one of the nuts. In fact, I'll look forward to it. No, I won't do that. <laughs> You're insufficiently nutty, Fitzwilliam. Undeserving of the title. Only an elite few can make it into SEAL Team Nut. And you are clearly unworthy. Let's clear up a few things though. Firstly, four-wheel drive. Let's define that. Arbitrarily, that is a system designed only for low traction surfaces. Slippery underfoot, in which the drive to the front axles and the drive to the rear axles can be locked together at the same rotational speed using Fred Flintstone's engineering. In other words, the front and rear prop shafts are mechanically locked to rotate at the same rate. All-wheel drive. Let's define that arbitrarily as a system designed to drive all four wheels, either continuously or occasionally, but with the front and rear prop shafts able to turn at different rates. And that means you can use all-wheel drive on high traction surfaces like sealed roads, dry bitumen, things like that. The big difference, when a vehicle drives on a curve, the front and rear end follow different paths. Therefore, the front and rear ends travel different distances, and therefore, on a high traction surface, the front and rear prop shafts need to spin at slightly different rates. On a low traction surface, the tyres can slip a bit if the front and rear prop shafts are locked together. But if you put a vehicle into four-wheel drive mode, prop shafts locked in unison, and you drive on a high traction surface on a curve, you will break something. At least you open the door to this event and warranty will not cover you because that's technically abuse. So, all wheel drive vehicles have some sort of sophisticated coupling between the front and rear prop shafts, either a differential or a viscous coupling, etc., that allows this relative rotation. They're more sophisticated and therefore more expensive. Most all-wheel drive SUVs have a four-wheel drive mode, usually engaged with a lock or a four-wheel drive lock button, or sometimes a rotating switch. Typically, you engage that to get through some mud or soft sand, whatever, in the snow, stuff like that, but not for driving on bitumen. 
if you know what's good for you or your vehicle. Now, back to Tess of the D'Urbervilles here and the misguided missive. To you, progeny of Jane Austen loving parents, I would say my Triton review is in fact entirely accurate on this point. I just checked. You're misunderstanding what Mitsubishi's easy select four-wheel drive system is. There is no diff lock front or rear in the easy select system. You got that right, pretty much the only thing you got right, but hey, it's something. In other words, there is a front axle differential with no lock, a rear axle differential with no lock, and a mechanical transfer case with no differential in the centre, sending only locked drive front and rear when you engage four-wheel drive. Easy Select is in fact marketing bullshit for the automation in place to select one of the three drive modes, which has been around for decades. You get 2H for high traction surfaces and 4H or 4L for limited traction conditions, slippery conditions only. With Easy Select, you can switch between 2H and 4H on the fly and then from 4H to 4L when you are stopped. If you switch on the fly between 2H and 4H, it's a good idea to be A, going straight ahead, B, lift off the throttle briefly and C, be going under 100 k's an hour. Easy Select absolutely must not be operated in 4H on high traction surfaces. It will break something expensive if you do that. Easy Select has a basic transfer case where the front and rear prop shafts are locked synchronously together. If you drive around a bend in this condition in 4H on a high traction surface, this will cause significant stresses in the transfer case and contribute to a loud, expensive noise and no more forward progress. That's bad. Mitsubishi says 4H is only for use on unsealed surfaces if, quote, extra traction is required. If you are bogged and you select 4H or 4L, the vehicle does not have cross-axle differential locks. Therefore, two wheels, not one, as you alleged, and usually a diagonally opposite pair, will try to spin, leaving you stranded. The Triton in this situation will activate its traction control system in an effort to mitigate this spinning condition and transmit some drive to the wheels that are not spinning and presumably still have some traction. There is no doubt the Triton Easy Select is the most basic kind of four-wheel drive system. It's certainly not all-wheel drive in the sense defined earlier. For some reason, indefensibly, Darcy, you seem predisposed to believing a friggin' car salesman whose only objective is to get you to part with your cash. This is a clear violation of my first law of universal car procurement, which defines the relationship between three-dimensional space and time in every showroom floor environment in the universe. The first law clearly states the time on the showroom floor during business hours is always bullshit o'clock. The salesman tried selling this as a good thing that you can use 4H on high traction surfaces. That's a car salesman bullshit sandwich right there. Who trains these people to be so breathtakingly wrong and yet so utterly confident? Outstanding. Above the base model, Mitsubishi uses the Super Select 2 system, which gives you one additional drive mode. You get 4H with a centre diff unlocked, allowing you to drive on a high traction surface in all-wheel drive mode. You also get 2H, 4H with the prop shafts locked synchronously together, and 4L, just like the base model Triton. Basically, the reason you pay more for Super Select 2 is because the transfer case is substantially more advanced than Easy Select in the base model. That's just how Triton rolls. My strong advice here is know the vehicle and understand its systems before you visit the dealership. Definitely do not conduct research at the dealership. And remember, if it's not guaranteed by the dealer in writing, Good luck proving after the fact that it was ever said. Dealerships bend the very fabric of space-time. You'll be bullshitificated in a heartbeat. And in this condition, it is very easy to purchase exactly the wrong new car. And I hate that. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this report helps. Thanks for watching.